People say he ain't no good And I'm crazy as a loon Cause I shave my head in the morning And pick guitar in the afternoon Just like old Chief and Charlie I like to lay around in the shade well, I ain't got no money But you better believe I got it made Cause I ain't asking nobody for nothing If I can't get it on my own If you don't like the way I'm living Just leave this bald-headed country boy alone Before this episode of the Josh Terry Podcast gets started, we want to thank all of our sponsors. 3B Construction and Roofing, Your Choice Healthcare, Lori's Dive-In, DPF Alternatives, and they have a new address, by the way. It is 288 Edington Highway, Gray, Georgia, 31032. Nobles Networking, Project K9 Hero, who is a lifetime sponsor of the show. If you would like to figure out how to be a lifetime sponsor of the show, please message me now. Cottonfield Grill, Pearl Promoting, Back Road Park, and Event Venue. Don't forget, November 10th and 11th, we are over there for their Veterans Day celebration. Friday night is Tristan Baugh and Confederate Railroad. And on Saturday is Miss Ella Langley and Trey Lewis. I will be hosting the event. It is going to be an awesome time. Do not miss out. Tickets are available now. Cashman's Pub, Down Yonder Hat Co., Deep South Chemical, and we're bringing back an old feature that we haven't done in a while. Our Spotlight Song of the Month, an artist spotlight, is on Mr. Hunter Mounts and Kyle Austin. They just put out a song called Collar Greens. I really, really like it. I'm going to play it for you in a couple weeks whenever these boys come into the show. So do me a favor now. Go follow both these guys on social media and download our Song of the Month, Collar Greens, by Hunter Mounts and Kyle Austin. Better than basic. Uh, Miss Erica does our website. She does all our graphic design. She does everything for us. Please go check them out now for any of your social media needs, marketing needs, whatever. And check out the Josh Terry Podcast.com, our official website. Grab some merch while you're there. And please leave a review and rate the show if you love this. Please help me grow. All I need you to do is take five minutes out of your time, go to Apple, Spotify, however you listen to the show, and leave a review. Leave us five stars. It helps us more than you know. I'm grateful for each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for making the show what it is. Now, I'll stop with the business side of the show now, and we'll get to talking. Thank y'all for listening. Enjoy the show. What's up, folks? Thank y'all for tuning into the Josh Terry Podcast. Uh, this one's going to be a different one from y'all for y'all than what I've done the past couple of days. Uh, I wanted to have this, uh, this awesome lady on last week when we were talking about body dysmorphia. Uh, but today we're going to have her on this. She is an advocate for just some really good social shit, like putting people on the spot and making them just blurt out the asshole version of themselves and making themselves look some of them, some people she's made look really good. Some people she's made look bad. And those people that may look bad need made to be look bad, if that makes sense to you guys. But anyway, I want to introduce y'all to Miss Espy. How you doing, darling? Hi, everyone. My name is Espy. And yeah, like you mentioned, um, this was a conversation that we were supposed to have last week. Yep. But of course, life happens, things happen, and um, it wasn't possible. But I'm very, very excited to finally be here today and, you know, talk to you get to know you and as well just get to know some of your listeners too what they're about because i feel like you're definitely a reflection of like your listeners so i'm just very excited to see what josh terry is about uh you're probably the first woman that's ever said that uh and had a (laughs) smile on their face while they were doing it so thank you um yeah I, i got i got stunned by your social media like there's not a lot of people that catch me off guard but as i'm scrolling through tiktok one day i see the video of you and like I, I didn't know anything about you. Of course, my for you page on everything is trash. It's pimple popping. It's ingrown toenails being ripped out. It's it's probably a lot of inappropriate. I love it's probably oh, I love. I can watch t- Toe Bro <laughs> and all that shit for hours on end. Um, but every once in a while, somebody comes across my for you page and I see what they're doing. I'm like, oh, this is cool. This is this is cool. I'm all about teaching people a lesson without 
having to take them to school. I guess that would probably be the best way. Like I'm not the person that's going to sit here and over educate you with my thoughts. I'm the person mm-hmm. that's going to be like, Hey, look, I'm going to prove a point to you. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. And the, within the first 10 seconds of seeing your video, if it wasn't shorter than that, I was like, Oh, she's got something. And I went and looked at a lot of your videos. I was like, okay, she's cool. We're, we're getting her ass on the show. <laughs> Oh, thank you. That sounds so awesome to hear, especially I love to hear people from like all different demographics, like not only, you know, women my age or older women or younger women. Like I love to hear that people of all ages, men, whatever the gender it is, people that enjoy the videos and like find entertainment value out of it or educational value out of it. Like that's always amazing to hear. So I want to thank you so much for that. Oh, you're very welcome. So explain to everybody. I wanted you to do it, not me. Explain to everybody what your like your main thing that you post is. Yeah, well, I post a lot of different stuff, but always, always revolving around the plus size community. Like that's definitely like my target audience, but it's definitely just like the you know, community that I am within and what who I want to reach for sure. Um yeah, so right now what I currently am, I would say, known for doing are like the interview stuff and going up to people, asking them questions regarding the plus size community. And it's always been super fun. For me, the purpose of doing it is for sure to start a conversation, um, get to know people's different opinions and all that jazz. And um, the way I always saw it, too, is if I am blessed and, um, you know, if I am someone that has the privilege to have a platform, like I want to give others the opportunity to use the platform as well. So that's definitely a huge reason why I did the videos too. Uh, yeah, I love that. Uh, so she's she's giving you the nice version of what she does. I'm going to tell you what captivated <laughs> me. Okay. okay. First video I saw of you, you walking up to a kid and you saying, hey, do you date? Would you ever date plus size? Uh, plus size woman right like I'm, I'm probably butchering exactly how you questioned this person but they were like fuck no like <laughs> well i can't remember what the dude said he was like i would never date a fat girl and right then i was like okay we're in a, I like i was mad at first and then how you kept your composure i was like okay this you know she knows what she's doing but just his reaction to that shit i was like man this is so fucked up like you're you're not yeah. supposed to like the fact that what pissed me off more and I don't I don't know how much you go into detail with these people before you ask them a question either. Like if I was okay. you, I wouldn't ask them shit. Like I, I don't know what you do. I don't know if you just walk up to random people and say, "Hey, we're turning the camera on. I want to ask you something on the spot or whatever." Or if it's you know some stuff structured out a little bit. But it tickled me and it made me mad, so mad. When the, his response to it, and I was like, we live in 2023. Like, there's mm-hmm. some shit that I bitch about. There's a lot of stuff that I bitch about. But that reaction and how that person thought it was okay to say yeah. that to your face. I was like, no, nah, that's why I stitched the video or whatever I did. And I was just like, there's there, there's, there's nothing wrong. I, first of all, I'm plus size. I, I used to be like 330, and now I'm like, two, like 230, 240 right now. But, like, when I was plus size, I got treated a certain way. I still get treated mm-hmm. a certain way. And I hate seeing anybody in that community just be like, have that. I hate the word fat. I hate it with a passion, especially when somebody skinny says it. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's just, there's not, there's not a, a positive connotation to it. And I don't know, like, when I saw it, I was like, okay. And I looked at the rest of your stuff. So that's what she does. What got you started doing that? Yeah. So firstly, I want to say thank you so much for kind of complimenting the way I keep my composure and such, because that's something I don't see a lot of. I do see some comments on my videos that say like, oh my gosh, like, can we give this woman some praise for how calm and collected and professional she was, you know, through, you know, just being told that in her face. And I really, really value those comments a lot. So I want to thank you so much for like giving me that little praise (laughs) um but what got me started in interviewing people about this topic it was actually I believe right before COVID or during COVID I did a Amigo version 
of this on my YouTube where I went on Omegle and I asked, you know, guys, oh, would you date a plus size girl? And that actually went pretty or did pretty well on my YouTube and TikTok for the time being, you know, I was just like a very, very tiny creator with like a very, very tiny platform. Um, so those did decent, right? And then I ended up doing a girl version where I asked girls, would you date a plus size man? And th that did pretty well as that did pretty good as well. Um, and then I ended up doing it in person years later when I finally built up the courage to do so. Um, it's always been something I've wanted to do. During COVID, I was like 19, 20, but I was still very, very oh, mentally you're a baby. shy. I you're a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm young. Okay, but okay. back then, like years ago, I was like so introverted, so shy. Like I could not, I could not even ask for like extra ketchup, like at a rush restaurant <laughs> or a refill. Like that's how shy I was. Like very, very shy. But now, like, I feel like with my major going to school, my jobs, my like work experience, like it, it's all like kind of like built up and like kind of challenged me. And now I've become this person where I try to put myself in uncomfortable situations in order to just improve myself as a person. And going out and doing those interviews was more like a challenge for me, not so much for the content, but because I struggle I know that you mentioned you also talk about mental health, but I also really, really struggle with anxiety, panic attacks, all that jazz. So doing those interviews is and still just still is like a challenge for me to do. But um, yeah, I, I ended up doing them in person uh, the end of last year because it's something I've always wanted to do since the videos on Amigle did pretty de decent. And I got some requests saying like, you should do this in person, you should do this in person. Um, and I finally did. And then the video ended up taking off. And I don't know, it's been a lot of fun. And now like, instead of being like scared to go out in the community and like do these videos, I'm actually like very excited. And I look forward to doing it. So yeah, it it's a lot of fun for sure. Well, first off, since you deal with anxiety and panic attacks and all that kind of stuff, I do too. Uh, I'll give you a little help that I wouldn't have known. And I'm 36. Wouldn't have known at your age. You, you, I guess you live in California, right? Yeah, I live in California. Yeah. Eat, eat, micro dose and eat mushrooms. It'll go away. Like permanently. I, I, mm. I know. I'm telling you, like I started it last year. Not, I don't know if you know the difference in like micro dosing and like trying to trip or whatever. Like it, you probably around some of the smartest people in the world being out in California. Look up all the people that microdose and what it's done for mental health. I guess it is a it's a, it's a gift. Microdosing mushrooms is the best thing on the planet. Uh, you know, you'll be a different person afterwards for the better. But uh, with everything else that you said, I, I appreciate somebody getting out of their shell, making themselves uncomfortable. Like if you don't ever make yourself uncomfortable, you're never going to learn nothing new. And I don't know what you're going to school for or anything. Like that. We don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. But in the day and age we live in, you have to expand. You have to get out there. Like being sheltered, is, you're just going to be another person. And I, I don't mean that in disrespect to anybody that's just another person that works a nine to five or anything like that. But it seems like you're the kind of person that probably wants more. Like you, you seem like with the stuff you're doing, like you're 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 pushing yourself. And I applaud you for that. Like a lot of people won't. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm an introvert. I'm scared to death to go outside or do go whatever. Outside. Like, and for you to push yourself, that's cool. No, yeah. And sometimes people, like, they'll watch the videos or, like, people that knew me from, like, in middle school, high school, or even my family, they're like, whoa, SB, like, this is crazy. Like, what happened? Like, you used to, like, not even – because my anxiety used to be so bad where it was really, really, really hard for me to like even leave my house um, back in high school. But she would or my family would just be like, oh, like I feel like you're completely different now. And it's so ama amazing to see like how much you've changed, how much you've grown. And I don't know, people that watch the videos always question and ask me, like, how do you have so much confidence? How are you? going out and putting yourself in these situations like how how do you not let like someone as rude as for example the boy you just talked about that said like no like absolutely like brutal like they always ask me like how do you not allow people like that to get to you and I want to say it's just been like a lot of practice and a lot of like also just learning how to go 
through things, everyone's different. And it's just the matter of like self-reflection and just getting to know yourself more and more. And then through all the challenges you go through, just learning how to navigate things, I would say. It's super important, but yeah, it's it's hard. And I literally never heard about the mushroom thing. I will definitely look into it. Um, <laughs> well, but I'm out. Yeah. I'm out there, dude. Like I've I've been to that point of my life to where like I'm tired of being anxious and uh, opioids. I I don't ever want to go down that road. I don't want to take anxiety medicine. So there's just so many studies and everything that what people are doing with mushrooms now uh, that are just the best. I mean, Netflix has a documentary called How to Fungi. And it talks about how this should have happened 70 years ago. But because me and you can go in our backyard and grow them, big pharma and shit was like, no, nah, we're going to make these as like the worst thing ever. It, it's, it's the best stuff. It really is. Um, I, I'd try to recommend it to everybody. Uh, not to sound like a crackhead or anything to any of y'all that have never listened to me before, but it, it does. It changes you. Um, and uh, with everything else, dude, like what, what made you – want to did you have you always centered your content around plus size or, or was that something like you wanted like with me i'm just going to give you example of something that i would do right and then like because i don't want to overstep with you i always need reassurance with shit like i deal with body dysmorphia i deal with anxiety depression all this kind of stuff sometimes i be i post a fire ass selfie like it takes me 37 minutes to fucking take just so somebody be like, oh, you look good today because I need that. I need that in my life, right? Was it, did you going out and asking like these certain questions, was it a way for you to like build some, some confidence and stuff about yourself? It took a lot, I would say for sure. Um, are you asking like if I ever felt the need to like receive like validation on the internet yeah, well, or like comments. yeah yeah like because i do like, that's what i'm saying like if you don't that's fine but like i'll be I was, i'm using me here me coming from being 330 pounds just a couple years ago to where i'm at now i still look in the mirror and see 330 pounds i still reach for a 2x shirt sometimes when i'm feeling like something snug on me it's just like a comfort thing when i lost my yeah. weight i wanted validation that you're attractive like, not that you can't be plus size and attractive because you obviously can. Um, but for me, I was I was kind of disgusted with myself. I, I did not feel good with myself. So I wanted validation after the fact. So, like, right. is that something that, that you do? Because you are a very attractive woman. And when you're dressed <laughs> up in the in the videos and everything and you, you look nice, it would be hard for any man that I know to look at you and be like, no, I wouldn't date a plus size girl. They probably all ask you for your number right there. To be real with you, that's I, I know me and my buddies. So, like, I'm just asking: Is it something that you did to help build up your confidence? Um, nothing that I've. Well, a lot. I've done a lot to answer your question about like validation. I feel like back in 2020, 2019, I saw like me getting like some sort of like high off of like posting. It's like something on Instagram and then I see it like pop off with like in terms of likes and comments, not so much because of the compliments, but the numbers and analytics aspects aspect of it. Like to me, I guess the attention really drove me and it drove me to the point where it kind of like made me like feel a little mad and crazy. And um, especially during COVID, I feel like we were all just so immersed in our cell phones where I felt like I was extra paying attention to the numbers. And then the numbers is what really drove whether I felt like worthy or validated enough. And it was just really, really bad at that point. It wasn't so much because of my looks or like how I wanted people to compliment me or validate me, but it was more so just like the, the comments and stuff that would that would really like get to me i would say and then if the post specifically didn't do good or i didn't feel it feel like it did good enough like my previous post like that would really affect me but um yeah it took it took a lot for me to not really allow the numbers and all that get to me and all that jazz but now i feel like i i feel best not looking at the comments because as much as there's a lot of positive sweet ones there's also those really negative ones where I know myself mentally enough where I'm just I feel like it's best for me 
and my well-being not to look at all because it it does affect someone. So yeah, that's how I feel about that. Yeah. Uh, well, first off, anybody that's ugly in your comments and mean to you has clearly never had a conversation with you. You are <laughs> so nice. So, but I always tell everybody too, you could have 90% of positivity in your comment section and you're only going to focus on that 10% that's being a dick. Like, but also sure. those people are miserable. Th those, those people are the most miserable people on the planet that wish that they had your confidence, mm -hmm. that wish that they could go out and walk up to a stranger. Like it's, it's usually jealousy. It's usually just those people don't matter, dude. Those people are the ones that at the end of the day, they got to go to bed probably crying. And I hate that anybody has to do that. I hate anybody has to live that life. But at the same time, yeah. like, look, if you're going to be ugly to other people, you're going to get what you deserve. Yeah, that's how I kind of see it too. Like I'm the type of person that believes – as well in what you put out in the universe is what you kind of receive. Yeah. And for me, it's always like, it's super, I cannot stress enough how much I believe into in like energies and vibrations and, you know, staying away from the, you know, the jealousy, even like in friendships, friendships, relationships, people around you. Even sometimes I hear people about having, you know, those, vib those negative vibrations with their own family. So yeah, I just feel like, Usually the people that are rude in the comments as well is mainly because they're maybe going through something themselves. So I try not to take it personally, but at the same time, when something is really like specific or it feels really personal, I'm just like, oh, like, no, that's not the truth. Or like sometimes people make assumptions about things. And I don't know, that's when it I feel like it's best if I don't look. But then again, I love to respond to like the really sweet comments or those comments that have questions and all that jazz or I like to like comments you know the ones that are very supportive so I don't know I'm very very grateful for the people that comment and like and all that stuff but there's always like the negative aspect of social media and then I also try not to complain about it so much because I'm like that's, <laughs> this is what I signed up for like the negative the mean stuff like that's just gonna come and like sometimes if I find myself talking about it with my mom like I'm like SB shut up like you signed up for this like it's you know it's you just have to like learn to be I guess a little numb to it all too well I think you either numb and you avoid it or you troll the shit out of it. like I'm I'm trying to yeah. teach, I'm trying to teach one of my friends now she's one of the sweetest people ever and she gets the most hateful comments like the most hateful shit in her comment section and I'm trying to get her now to be like, look, if they say you did this or they make a comment about you, then be like, no, that's not actually what happened. I kicked the puppy instead. I know that sounds stupid, but like make it worse. Like if yeah. these, pe these people don't know you, they don't know your life. They don't know the real story of you or what's real or fake. So when they start saying shit that's not true, laugh it off, play with it, have fun with it. It's like, damn, I didn't know yeah. I did that. I, I didn't know that about me. That's awesome. When did I do that? Like these, totally these, pe no. these people don't matter, dude. These folks are miserable. They're miserable. Like it's, I, I'm sad for them most of the time. Like you. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's just sad. And what probably a lot of them are sad of, uh, I might ask you a question and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way. Okay. Cause I don't okay. know how it's to word this. Do you okay. consider yourself a plus size girl? Because okay, you do. Right? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, like, yeah. I, I don't know. I didn't want to ask that in a disrespectful way because I consider myself <laughs> plus size. Okay, I'm not. I, I consider myself plus size, but I didn't want to be disrespectful towards you when I asked it. Mm -hmm. Those men or those women in your comment section are the ones that, no matter if it's plus size, if it's a skinny person, if it's whoever. These person, these people know they have absolutely no chance with you. That is are to be you, not just to talk to you, but to be you. And that's what eats a lot of people. A lot, a lot of women would have just, if I said, Hey, do you consider yourself plus size? Like that have been, or even men, they'd have got super touchy about it. But that's you. You're you're a beautiful person. Like there's no reason to be touchy about. It. We're not made the fucking same way as everybody else. There's there's nothing wrong with it. And a yeah. lot of these people cannot grasp that you are confident 
that you are happy with yourself the way you are. I'm happy with me the way that I am. So when they see you, they're probably plus size just like you. And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, no, this isn't fair. This isn't fair that she goes out and she looks good and she can talk to these people. And I'm sitting here just being miserable. That That's all. That's yeah. usually what that shit is. Or some young kid that doesn't know that sexy doesn't have a size. It's some kid that thinks that you got to look like a starving ass Victoria's Secret model to be attractive. And that's not the fucking case. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, totally. I feel like. Like, I was just talking about this with my sister yesterday. Like, I feel like everyone is more, like, than welcome to have a preference, have a body type or something that they're more attracted to than others. But then there's also a line where it's like you could have a preference without, you know, disrespecting or devaluing devaluing the body of another person um but yeah it's it's very interesting these comments and then sometimes i even get like hate messages like just in my dms like from for example a guy and then the next week i get another message from that same person and it's like uh i won't even say like a nice comment but it's like one where they're like just complimenting me or just being like sexually inappropriate and I was like hey well like two weeks ago you were saying how much like I'm gonna be swell and then like the next week you're telling me like an inappropriate like sexual comment like I don't know I feel like at the same time there's like these people that kind of don't want to accept their emotions or maybe their sexual attraction towards like plus size females and so they feel like hatred within themselves I don't know it's very very weird but I'm learning more and more about the community as, you know, being a part of it. I just feel like it's so, it's so, I feel like underrated too. Like within the plus size community, especially on the internet, a lot of it is like uh, plus size fashion or beauty, which I love. Like I'm obsessed with all things like makeup, clothes. Um, But I feel like there's a lot of like uncovered, uncovered conversation around like bigger bodies, whether that's in dating or or insecurities or confidence um and i just kind of wanted to be that person and fill in that gap to like you know drive conversation around these uncomfortable topics because as i always say like i feel like the most value comes out of that for sure yeah uh i read that on your instagram and tiktok while ago i absolutely love that i absolutely love that yeah. phrase that you use yeah 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 i i it's i want to say it's for sure my my <laughs> new catchphrase and um yeah it's 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 for sure something that I'm, I'm living by like every day because whether that is just about the plus size community or not just just about anything in general I feel like the conversations you feel the most uncomfortable to have like those are typically most of the time the most valuable to have well they're the ones that need to be had like it, yeah you you don't grow unless I, I don't grow as a person unless I talk to you. If at some point in time you yeah. make me uncomfortable, it's probably because you're telling me something. There's a difference in somebody being weird, uncomfortable. And then there's another type of uncomfortable to where I just don't know what you're talking about. And right. if I don't, then I'm ignorant. If I just go ahead and I'm closed minded right off the bat and say, Oh, this scares me because I don't know what it is. You know, it's a different way of life. There's probably things that me and you could go back and forth on on the way that we were raised, being on complete opposite sides of the country to where you wouldn't get a damn thing that I enjoy doing or I wouldn't get a damn thing that you enjoy doing, right? And right. people and people are just like, to me, there's nobody right or wrong in those scenarios. It's mm-hmm. you either learn and you make yourself uncomfortable by learning from someone else or you're just you're just kind of dumb. Like you're just kind of so close minded that it's like, oh, you're on you're telling me the only things that you're gonna know and appreciate the rest of the life, your life are the things you understand now. I wanna look I want you before we get off here to teach me something I don't know. I want tomorrow the person that I have on the show to teach me something I, I don't know or make me look at the world in a different way than what I do yeah. right this minute. And that, people that aren't like that, I I really don't have nothing for them. We really don't we don't really screw with those kind of people. Um have you found like, cause first off men are pigs. I'll be the first one to tell you the majority of us, I'm a girl dad. If it wasn't for my daughter, I used to be very piggish, very, very pig. I have a 12 year old daughter now. 
and I am not a pig anymore. I'm retired. I'm 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 ex bacon. So like, never get mad or like laugh at the guys in your inbox that'll say some slick shit to you one minute and then you don't give them the answer they want and they go completely dickish. They just turn into a mean person. I've never been that type of person. I don't understand how anybody could be, but there's, but they're so stupid to me. Like there's, there's no sense in that. Them saying something inappropriate one minute and then the next minute being mean. Like is that's, do you get a lot of that? Yeah. Or it's the other way around. Like it's kind of crazy. And I, I do, I do get, I get uh, messages like that. I wouldn't say a lot, but um, yeah, I for sure get that. <laughs> you probably get a lot of marriage requests too from guys you've never met, right? A lot of I do, I I do get a lot of marriage requests. I I do get marriage requests in my emails as well. In your emails, <laughs> I've never even got one in my email. <laughs> you get them too. That's awesome. Uh, well. Our show's like 70% women that listen to me. Men are not a big oh, fan of me. Amazing. Uh, yeah, what? Men don't like me. Uh, but it's also I, I I get it. I'm a I'm a very confident person. And it's not mm-hmm. because of my appearance or or anything like that. It's because like I believe if you don't have confidence in yourself, nobody else is going to. So like yeah. what I what I do for a living, this is my job. Like I don't do anything else. I host events. Uh, I work with country music artists doing some live shows in Nashville and everything like that. But for the majority, my show is the only thing I do now. And a lot of men don't like that. A lot of men don't like that I'm 36 and I'm living what they consider a life of leisure. And it's not like it's it's really not. I work my ass off. So men don't like yeah. me. And, and then women like my point of view on stuff. Like even how I just said men are pigs. Like, but I'm also don't want the men to be that way. I want men to show women respect. I want them to like realize, hey, we're not 12 years old anymore. You ain't got to be mean to a woman to make her like you. You ain't got to yeah. pick on like. There's no you can't do that as an adult. Like you can't deal with an adult woman that way. And so like it's, sure. it's nice that so like these women do message me because I'm 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 single. And they message me and they'll be like, I sure like to take you out or be your sugar mama or something like that. And it's like, look, you better, you, you start throwing some money at me. We'll talk then. Dang. You got it like that, Josh. That's I wish nice. I, had it, I wish I had it better than that, to be honest with you. Uh, what more, what more do you want, Josh? Tell oh, me. What more do I want? Uh, I don't know, dude. I am. I want, if somebody was to come up to me and they had a career and they lived on a golf course and all I ever had to do was move my shit into the basement, them go to work every day, me play golf and me do the podcast. I probably marry them tomorrow. <laughs> well, you hear that ladies. That's all. That's all Josh wants and what yeah, he needs. That's it. I can pay my own bills. You just gotta give me space. Gotta give me space to work <laughs> and a little bit of golf. Uh, I've never been married though. I've never been married. I view marriage in a very sacred way. Uh, I don't knock anybody that gets married and divorced, married and divorced, and all that. I don't casually date. So, like, if I date you, I'm probably dating you for a long period of time. I uh, I just I don't see the need in casually dating. Now, while yeah. I go on dates, I'm a 36 year old man. I'd be lying if I didn't say I go on dates and and try to sleep with women. Like I said, I'm grown ass man. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, mm-hmm. but I don't, I don't casually date. Like if I have spending time with you more than a handful of times, it's because I want it to be something. I want it to develop into something to a real relationship. Uh, and I'm just, I just happen to be one of those people that I, I want, I'm spoiled. My grandparents were married forever and I saw what like a real marriage is supposed to be. A lot of my family's that way. I also grew up in a generation where you had the fucking notebook. And you had all these other great movies, and I'm tender hearted as shit. So I like, I still like watching that stuff. And it's like this shit is out yeah. here. Like it really is. Like I don't care. A lot of people say social media has ruined it. I don't think it's ruined it. I think that it's made it to where we've sped up the process of being with people to where we don't have to be. Like you can still take your time, get to know somebody. Like this social media has given you a million options. I'm the I'm the kind of person I don't want a million options. I want one. 
Like that, that's it. And it's, it's very complicated to date me. I'll put it that way. I, it's very hard. You're, you're a rare breed, Josh. Well, we're, we're different. We're different around here, which I think <laughs> we're different. I'm the only one. Um, I'm romantic. I mean, I just, I love that, but I love poetry. Yeah. I love, I love writing poetry. I love writing music. Uh, that's kind of the other thing I do. Like it, I can't write a song about something I don't feel. I can't, like, I just don't know how mm -hmm. to do that. But in the same way, it's what I want. Like I could have been married two or three times by now, probably, but that who wants to get married two or three times. I, I want the shit where we're growing old and gray and wrinkly and shit together and roasting each other every single day and talking massive amounts of shit, and making each other giggle. I want my best friend to be my wife. And like, if you if you're just going and i do have to talk to my buddies about this all the time if you're just going by mm -hmm. appearance that's why i love content like yours by the way is if you're okay. just going by appearance on people like you never get to see the value of a person if you're always judging a book by its cover i'll go and tell you you probably have a better personality from all the videos i've seen of you in just this half an hour that i've talked to you then 90% of the women that I, that I have to do shit with on social media, a lot of people are just a pretty face, right? Like a lot of people have, and not, not don't say, I don't mean this, but like you're a very pretty woman. <laughs> like, I don't want you to be like, damn, is he calling me fugly and shit? No, I'm not. Calling, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm definitely not doing that. I'm not doing that. But some people are just like, I see a pretty face, uh, big ass, big tits. I want this person. This person's amazing right off the bat. And it's like, have a conversation with them. Talk to them and see if they can fucking, you know, win a third grade spelling bee. Like, see, mm -hmm. see what they are. That to a grown man, that's nice to look at, but that shouldn't have that much value. Somebody's heart and personality should be where you get the value from. No, 100%. And I'm, I think, that is something that I feel like a lot, a lot of men, you know, are kind of lacking in this generation, especially mine, you know, being in my early 20s. They don't really see that. I feel like they see social media as like a tool to like see as many options as they want. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, teach their own, like, especially if a guy's young, you know, have fun, you know, be out there. But I'm definitely the type as well where I'm such a hopeless romantic. My favorite movie of all time is The Notebook still to this, like since I was 15, 16, that was my favorite movie. And it still is till this day. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely a huge hopeless romantic. And I feel like I, I think so far, like the few the few men that I've, you know, met, like it's. I don't know. It's just very, it's very different than what I kind of envision for sure. But I don't, I'm not like, I don't feel discouraged though. I don't yeah. feel like, oh my gosh, it doesn't exist. It's never going to happen. I know it will happen. And, you know, I trust myself. I trust the universe. I trust my higher, higher power, which is God, that he's kind of, you know, saving the greatest man for me that is yeah. out there. And yeah, that's that's basically how I'm feeling right now about love in this generation. Oh, you're not you're not the only one. Your generation sucks already, by the way. Like <laughs> I, I want you to know, your generation. Had, like, I think I'm. I graduated in '06. What were you like? Two years old then. It seems like. Um, I'm just I'm just playing with you, but like, <laughs> like it is where your generation has been force fed what a man is supposed to look like, what a woman's supposed to look like. It has been force fed. Oh, this is what you do. Like this is how, you know, you send a, a text message or you slide into somebody's DMs to get to know. Them. We were still writing notes and shit when I was in high school and right mm -hmm. before that, be like, Hey, would you like to go on a date with me and shit like that? And like, I'm yeah. a hopeless romantic bat. And by the way, if you love the notebook, I've got one for you. If you've never seen it, it's like, is in my top five. I'm a huge movie buff. Have you ever watched Legends of the Fall? I have not. When we, whenever you get you a bottle of wine, some whatever, just chill at the house. If you love, if you love the Notebook, and I do too, Legends of the Fall. Yeah, you by the end of it, you're gonna send me an Instagram message and be like, "Thanks a lot for this asshole." Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's a great story. It's just a love story. Like everybody, something else to exceed my expectations. Sweetie, and like... that's, that's what's so fucked up with me. 
is I, I believe in that. And I'm not going to stop believing in it anyway. I'd rather it take 40 years to find the right person than spend a year with the wrong person just because, Seven. yeah, I'm not going to. You don't have to. You know, we're me and a guy that we was doing the show with earlier today, a country music artist, we were talking about the settling shit. And mm -hmm. we're we're so, especially like where, where I'm from in a small town. I grew up in a small country town. It's where you are taught from a very young age. You go to high school. You meet your high school sweetheart there. You go to college. You get a degree. You go to work for somebody else the rest of your life. And you have kids. You have a little farmhouse, all the shit. You work hard the rest of your life. And that's supposed to be life here. And that's not a bad life at all. But... Mm -hmm. There's no way you can meet your child. There's, there's no way you should get married right after high school or in college. You don't even know who the hell you're going to be yet. You have no, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know who I was going to be until I was 28 years old. I did what everybody else wanted me to until I was 28. And then I was like, hey, we're not doing this shit no more. Like I want to make myself happy. And you can't find the person you want to be with or who really matches with your soul until you're very comfortable with yourself. Right. No, yeah, I've been I've been thinking about this specifically too last night is I feel like everything in the aspect of my work life, school life, professional life, I feel like I'm definitely right where I want to be. But in terms of like my personal life or like my relationship life or, you know, just even maintain friendships, relationships. I feel like that has a lot to do with like yourself, your inner being, the relationship you have with yourself too. And I'm nowhere where I want to be. So <laughs> I made it a goal for myself. Like this is something that I want to work on, that I need to work on. I want to be the best possible, you know, daughter, the best possible girlfriend, the best possible sister. Um, so for sure, I feel like that all, you know, starts from self-reflection, self-love. And that's definitely my next goal, I would say. Well, I'm glad that that's your goal. And I want you to realize with the content that you're making, you're helping other women, especially women, get there with their goals, like to get that mindset. You know, mm -hmm. everybody that is, you know, not plus size, that's smaller than us, they get told every day, you're pretty. They get told mm -hmm. every day, like, they'll get a million likes on a video or some stupid shit like that right off the bat, right? And it kind of makes you... Well, I shouldn't say you, it makes me like sometimes make it kind of tax that self worth a little bit, kind of hits you where it hurts sometimes to see like, Oh, why, why am I not getting this shit said about me? But they are by the content mm -hmm. that you make. And I think that's what really drew me to you is I know that there's somebody out there. There's some woman that has seen a video that you've made and they've got, they've seen the reaction from a man being like, of course I would. They're beautiful. Like, that you're you're giving out something really good into the world. You're helping people with doing it. Yeah, it's funny. Like some of the shit's funny. Uh if I was you, I would trash talk the shit out of the ones that were ugly. Like, but you're a good person. I'm not. <laughs> like I would <laughs> I would roast the shit. That dude who said that shit to you, the one the video that I stitched where he's like, I'd never date a fat girl or whatever. And they'd be like, look at your skinny ass. Like I, I probably wouldn't date you either. Like it was like, how dare you? Like you're you're doing it the right way to where it is you're building up confidence in other people. That that's why I asked a while ago about the um was it making you feel better about yourself? To hear people. Cause I know just from the videos I've watched, when you hear a woman say, Of course I date a plus size guy. It's like, okay, let's go, girl. Like, yeah, I needed I needed to hear that today, you know. Like I, yeah. that's what I was kind of getting to a while ago was uh, I, I think it probably, I would hope that it makes you feel better about you being a single person too. Yeah, for sure. I feel like a huge, huge aspect too. I mean, and just another part of the reason why I do the um on the street interviews would be to show exactly that, to show that like plus size representation within like the dating scene or just even like plus size marriage, like you don't really see that in mainstream media. You don't see that right. in Hollywood. You don't see that on the streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, like there's never a plus side lead ever. Like 
we're lucky if we get a plus size lead in like a comedy, let alone like a romance. Like what, when's the last time you've seen that? Probably like Hairspray or there was this movie called Dumpling that was more recent. I love but even Dumpling. Then, like, love Dumpling. Yeah, it's so, okay. so good. But then I rewatched that movie. I'm like, oh, I wish there were more love scenes. Like I wish there was more of like romance in it. But I totally get why it was more so like focused on, you know, like her yeah. self-discovery and growing up. But then there's that always that aspect of me that's just like fiending for like it's the hopeless romantic in me for sure. And the Pisces in me where it's like I want to see a plus size lead like in a romance and whatnot, whether that's a female, whether that's a male, like there's a huge audience, a huge demographic for it that's fiending just as much, which I feel like is a huge part of the reason why the videos do well um because of the reactions of course and what people say but because like it's a conversation or just something like plus size like it's just something that people want to see more of because they want to feel seen they want to feel heard and i just want to be that girl that's part of that change and that's part of making guys and girls feel seen and heard so that's a huge part of the reason why i do it as well and I don't know. It's it's really nice to hear, especially from people like you that like kind of see that value in it, because yeah. there's also been a lot yeah. of that whole, oh, why are you asking men this? Why are you asking attractive men this? Like you're just seeking male validation. Like you want a boyfriend that bad, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, no, that's like far of my goal and far of what I want to do. Like, yes, I'm single, but I'm not like out there like seeking, you know, for like, yeah. like no, I would not. I would not do that. Ain't but it's obvious that that's not what you're doing. Anybody that says that hey, they're not paying attention to it. It's it's really clear. You're you're building up confidence, not just in not. I'm not saying you're doing it for yourself. You're building up a confidence for other people. Like you're letting mm -hmm. other people know to be comfortable in their own skin. Like if you, if you're plus yeah. size, be the baddest plus size bitch you can be, or guy. Like who who whoever said that you can't be a plus size person and be sexy. Like it, it's, it's definitely a real thing and you posting stuff and other people like you posting stuff. You're right. There's not anything with Netflix, Hulu, any of that shit that the plus size part of it isn't part of the gimmick of the movie. Like I want there just to be a plus size person that's there that they don't have to be like, Oh, by the way, this and this happened. This is why they're plus size or whatever are supposed to be mm -hmm. overly funny because they're plus size. I kind of, I don't take offense to it. think it's some of the shit's funny, but at the same time, it's like, why do we have to discuss why they're plus size? Like, why mm -hmm. can't they just be happy plus size and the star of something? And yeah. that that's the only thing to be honest with you. And I won't get into any of this other weird shit about, equaling out the playing field when it comes to all other kind of bullshit. But like it is where, in my opinion, that is the one thing that everybody fucks up with is with plus size people. Cause if you do see them, it's a gimmick. Why can't it just be, Hey, this was the best person for the job for the acting position for the movie, whatever. And let's just give it to them and let's just make them, the star without having to be gimmicks that go along with it. Mm -hmm. And it makes people feel bad. It, I know, I know it's done it to me before, not really in the movie scene, but it's not like Kevin James. Uh, I don't know if you know, who Kevin James is um, Kevin James was on King of Queens. He's been in uh, here comes the boom. Uh, Paul Blart. Uh, I'm trying to think of movies that you would know that Kevin James was a star in. When you see him, there were memes going around like crazy the past month of Kevin James from his days back in King of Queens. Um, but anyway, Kevin James is like the only guy I can even sit here and think of. That's a plus-size mm -hmm. actor that's been the lead in something. And it's usually yeah. they poke fun at him in the movie or something being plus-size. You doing stuff, cool. people like me talking about it being okay. Hey, look, if, you, if you're healthy, the only time I ever will say anything to anybody about their weight, if they're not healthy. If you feel good and you're big boned or plus size or whatever, be the just be happy and be the best version of yourself. Totally. I feel like I feel the same for sure. And then in, in terms of like the the movies and all that jazz, like I I mean the stream if any streaming services are listening to this now, I'm more than happy and more than down to be that person, be that change. 
I'm sure Josh is down to be the first I'll, male I'll lead in it. I'll do it right now. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a start. Like, my videos are definitely a start. And I, I'm working on a lot of other stuff, too, that is going to help drive the conversations to more. And, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to see where it goes because I've been doing social media for such a long time. Um, it doesn't feel like a job. I hope for it to be like something that I do full time because I love it so much. But yeah, it's something I am for sure so passionate about. And I love to hear from people like you or other plus size individuals that do watch it and feel seen and heard and don't feel offended by it. So it, it definitely makes me feel better. Well, that's cool. Well, let's do this before we get off here. Drop your social media handles real fast. And uh, if there's anything you want to say to plus size community or whoever, what I don't care. Just if there's anything you want to leave everybody with, you just seem like such a damn sweetheart to be real with you. Like I'm used to having jerks on this show. Understand. Really? Like, I, oh yeah. Cause I'm nobody wants to do a show with me. That's nice. Uh, like it, it, it's, I shouldn't say that. I have a lot of well, ama amazing guests, but they don't like that. They want to just push what they do. And I don't, yeah. I can't knock them for self-promotion. But you don't seem like you're an I person. You seem like you're an us person, a we person. And those are the people I like because they're actually trying to contribute to the world. They're trying to make other people feel better, like, regardless of what you do. Like, I, it's just cool for me to see people, especially the younger generation like you. I feel like such a grandpa when I say that, by the way. But, like, <laughs> everybody that's around your age that I've ever had on the show, they're a me, me, me. And you are literally like, you haven't said, I don't even know if you said the word I, I'm always careful about the people who say I a lot. I like the people that say we a, a lot. And like, you, you seem like what you're doing is not for clickbait, not for nothing else. It's, it's genuinely a sincere thing that you do. And I, I like, I like the shit out of you, kid. Well, thank you for being so kind to me, Josh. Um, and you're not a grandpa. You're very young. You said you're 36, right? Yeah, uh, 36 is old around here. No, it's not. It's very young. You're very young. <laughs> I don't know who got you thinking that you're old, but you're definitely not. My body, um, my body tells me every day <laughs> I am not a young man no more. No, no, no. Well, thank you again for being so sweet. And, and you wanted me to say my Instagram? Yeah, just tell them your Instagram, your TikTok. That way they can go <laughs> look you up and check you out whenever we get done with this. Okay, yeah. So my Instagram is at 11SB and my TikTok is at 11SB as well. I'm also coming out with a brand new podcast called Secrets I Shouldn't Tell. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, um, I feel like a message that I want to say to not only the plus size community, but just everyone in general would be to you know continue working on being the best version of yourself you could possibly be um i feel like what matters most is how you feel about yourself rather than what others feel about you so never allow the opinions of others you know really reflect on the way you view yourself as well so just stay mindful of that always and yeah i'd love to connect with you so feel free to come on by check out the videos and yeah i want to thank josh too very very much for having me on the pod anytime darling and let me know when you get that thing up and running i'll help you get some traction over that way <laughs> all right thank you so much i do need like a podcast mentor because it is super brand new to me but yeah i definitely i definitely will reach I, out i do it with a lot of people already uh and i don't mind putting one more on there. I, I i don't think i got put in this position for no reason i came from radio so i already had experience in a lot of shit and then mm -hmm. i had i heart radio pushing me right off the bat with some good shit so like i don't mind especially if you're a good person like I don't see, I don't see you getting on there and just being mean to people, to people. like blasting <laughs> people. I see you on there wanting to bring something pretty into the world, and anything okay. that's like that, I don't mind helping. Not at all. No, yeah, and and the pod is just going to be even more like uncomfortable conversations, but nice ones, valuable ones, and hopefully stuff that's informative and people can learn from, and of course educational too. So. Again, I'm just very grateful that you made the time to talk with me today. And Anytime. yeah.
Well, thank you, ma'am. Well, folks, I need you guys to go check Miss SB out and uh, leave some love on her pages and stuff. Follow her on everything and uh, follow more people like her. Follow more people that want to put something pretty out into the world. Pay attention to that shit. Don't always be up somebody's ass just because they're shaking their ass on social media or because they're on there just belittling folks. Some of that stuff, it's not it's not what we should be, con- be content on all the time. We should find some pretty in this world. And uh, that's a little message for today, and I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you all for listening to the show. Love each and every one of you. I will see you all later.